we, we've already discussed this with uh, w with our owner. We've already discussed it as a coaching staff and, and a, a performance staff with our conditioner. And uh, that's one of the reasons. We've got a big squad. Mm -hmm. Believe you me, we've got a big squad. Uh, and we've got some good 19s as well, or, or I wouldn't be, I wouldn't bat an eyelid at playing in, in first grade. And our management of numbers is going to be essentially, if we're going to be successful as a club, I and, our, and my coaches staff will have to manage our numbers really, really well mm -hmm. because, you know, there is this Yorkshire Cup, which I'm in favour of as a pre season game. There's 26 league games, hopefully, there's some playoffs for Bradford, and hopefully, there's some 1895 and Challenge Cup games mm -hmm. as well. So there's going to be a, a lot of rugby league between now and, and mid-October and I just believe squad management is going to be as important as the tactical and technical uh, aspects that you put into your players. You, you are right, you, you make the point, you have got a big squad this year and, and managing, not so much egos, but managing the happiness of players that are maybe frustrated they're not playing week in, week out. I guess, I guess the management side, as you say, is probably going to be harder, more challenging than the actual coaching side. Exactly right, yeah, I mean there's, there's a finite amount of knowledge just to regard to how to play the game of rugby league, whether it's technically or tactically, so you know, that, that's accepted, but there isn't a finite amount of knowledge of how to manage people, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's going to be one of the, you know, it's going to be one of the tasks that we're going to have, have to address, because we've got a big squad, but the the caveat is, and I feel real at ease with it, is the fact there's so many games. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did it last year, we monitored uh, the minutes every player played over the course of the season. We'll certainly be monitoring the minutes over the pre-season games mm -hmm. to make sure that the players are properly prepared for the competitive side of it. But obviously in season as well we'll have to do that. And you know, people like Jake Webster who's, you know, is at the wrong side of 30 from an athlete's mm -hmm. point of view. And, uh, and uh, Ash Gibson, we've just got to make sure that we look after them and we rotate the squad so that we've, we get the best out of them in the games that we feel are, are real important. So it might well be a, a matter of, uh, of planning for your, your spikes in your performance and, and, and you know, your downtime. And by downtime, I don't mean you're obviously not going to want to lose, but your, your preparation week might be a little harder yeah. just to keep them topped up conditioning skills wise, etc. You, um, you've been through a lot of pre-seasons, I don't think that's unfair to say, um, but there's real buzz around the Bulls at the minute. How excited are you for the 2019 season and the prospect of what it could bring for the Bradford Bulls? Oh, massively. I, I really am. I mean, it, I, I have done a lot of pre-seasons, as you've rightly pointed out. Uh, I haven't done one like this, where we've got full-time players and part-time players, and it, it's absolutely tremendous. It really is. Because uh, I mean, I'll be going from here with the full-time players to do some work, but you know, the, the full-time players are doing that bit extra during the day. But the part-time players are still—they're getting four half days in. Well, that's a lot of time commitment to do. And the full-time players—they're getting sort of five three-quarter days. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time being invested in them. But we feel that investment will come to fruition once we start the game, and obviously part of the investment again is the is the management of them, and that will be part of me w when we're doing our pre-season meetings and when we're setting our goals and when we have, have our individual meetings with players. That's one of the things I'll have to explain to the players. Hopefully, every player wants to play every game, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not in their best interest to play every game, and that's going to be part of uh, that I'll have to sell to them that for the benefit of the group, the team, they might well have to sit in the stand for the odd game so that in the fullness of the season we get maximum performance. How, how do you balance that I, in terms of structure, not so much the fitness but the structure, the technical side, the, you know, the moves, how do you, how do you work that the full time, part time? Well, in all honesty, we, always, we have four sessions where we're all together, okay. so you know, th that allows us to come together as a group because you've got to have that mm. because they've got to learn to trust each other and trust each other's back and have each other's back mm. so that should somebody miss a tackle, make an error, they're happy to work that extra bit harder in order to make up for that. So mm. we still do lots of work together, but there, are, there obviously is, is an element where they're separate as well, but that, that's how it is but 
I feel it's a, it's a great model to tell you the truth because what it allows me to do as well, when we bring the pack, we often bring 19s in with them as well, mm -hmm. and I've got a better handle on this group of 19s we've got at Bradford than I've had on any, whether I've been at Hull, mm -hmm. whether I've been at Wigan previously, or whether I've been at Wakefield. I know these 19s really, really well, and it's because we work so much in the sort of afternoon, then the twilight before yeah. crossing over into the evening. I want to ask you about the 19s, because there's a lot of talk about your likes of Jake Webster and Jai Hitchcock, who are big name signings, but there is a lot of murmuring about how talented this bunch of 19s are that you have at your disposal. In your yeah. words, how good are they? They're outstanding, believe you me, and that's, that's another of the reasons I'm not bothered about these extra fixtures. Mm. I can't stand in the way of Ollie Wilson. I can't stand in the way of Rowan Mills. I can't stand in the way of Matty Stoughton, uh, uh, Evan Hodgson. All these kids are coming through and they need some first team football and this will allow us to do that and, mm -hmm. and that's how we develop players and obviously they are gifted players, two have played for Yorkshire, one's featuring this coming next couple of weekends mm -hmm. against the Australian schoolboys. So we've got to have a pathway for them or else it's pointless running the 19th yeah. and we feel we've got that pathway and in part it's due to this number of games. So can we expect to see them play a lot of games this year? You certainly can, yes. We've earmarked how many games we, we feel that they'll play mm -hmm. but we earmarked with Brandon Pickersgill, we thought he'd play about eight and ended up playing virtually a full season so sometimes they come in and they surprise you and you can't leave them out because they're playing so well. And just finally, naturally with the name comes great expectation. There are expectations that you can really challenge at the top. In your eyes, what can you achieve? What can you expect of this group of players you've well, got you, this year? First of all, you want to win every game, which but that's naturally from any competitive person. But you've also got to be realistic and we've got to accept this. There's established championship clubs such as Toronto and, and Toulouse who are full-time Halifax who are the top part-time team at the minute. And we're going to be challenged, we know that. But also I feel a bit of a relief because last last year we were expected to wallop everybody by 40 points. If we didn't buy 40 points, people were disappointed. Well, this year they'll probably be happy just to win yeah. and that's better for us. So I, 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 I don't set limits on anybody. What we'll try to do is we'll try to say we'll start the season strongly, then once we start the season strongly we'll have a look further down the line where we are with it. But our plan is to manage this group really well and we feel if we manage them well we'll have a successful season.